I'm, uh, I'm from Boulder. Um, this is kind of my world here. I've got two little girls that I spend a lot of time with um, in between Care 2 and Ola Momo. And um, just a little bit about each. Care 2 started back in 1998. It was one of the first social networks actually right after Friendster. And we've grown to be really the largest site for uh, people that care about causes. And I've had the, the privilege of working for them uh, for about eight years on about 500 campaigns for a huge variety of causes and brands. So um, we just hit the 25 million member mark a couple weeks ago, and we're growing at about a million people a month now. Um, really exciting. And um, about six years ago, I moved back to Boulder from DC, where I was working with Care2, and started this wacky little nut company called Olo Momo. Um, got a couple of my crew back here, Mark and Heather. And um, <clears throat> this, this brand is really taking off. Um, there's a lot of connection between what I've learned at Care2 and this brand, and I'll just show you some, share some of those tidbits tonight. But uh, um, it, was, it was great to hear some of the previous speakers talk on, on some of the elements that will show up here. And um, if you'll bear with me, you're about to see 60 slides in 15 minutes. So <laughs> hang tight. <clears throat> um, so um, what would you do if you had 100,000 people that were following you, that were part of your tribe? What would your world look like? Um, it's actually pretty darn possible. In fact, uh, this client of mine, Abe's Market, which is sort of an Amazon.com for um, natural products, is about to recruit 100,000 people from Care2 in two months. Um, that is all the result of content marketing over the last 10 years. And that's the end result that can happen. Um, we're using a lot of these theories now as we kick off our online presence with Olomomo and how we're going to grow, grow our presence here. Um, so this slide kind of makes me drool every time I see it um, in many ways. Um, but look at the number there of Facebook fans they have. What's fascinating is that um, that, that number right there represents about half of their customers, um, half of their revenue. So there's an Ad Age article a couple years ago. Their Facebook fan base represented uh, something like $50 million, which was half of their annual revenue. So that, that doesn't mean they're buying through Facebook. It's kind of hard to buy beer on Facebook. Um, but that means that this brand has done an absolutely fantastic job of building a tribe that is connecting with them through pretty much every channel. Um, so how y'all doing on the internets? <laughs> We're going to do a quick quiz here. Um, what you're going to do is uh, raise your hand if you agree with the following statements. I'm going to go pretty fast, so I'm not going to talk. You're just going to read these. Okay, so who remembers this guy? <clears throat> Raise your hand. Okay, so pretty much soundtrack of my life, you too, right? Going back to the growing up in the 80s. And um, so there's kind of a story here that ties into everything. One of the greatest brands ever right here. Survived 30 years, you know, built a massive tribe of people. They're still growing that tribe with, you know, the youngins these days. And... Um, <clears throat> And then what happened was, so, so my, my personal connection besides all the ski trips, and I grew up in Boulder, and you know, my older brother introduced me to YouTube back after they first played their first show in the US in Colorado. Um, so here I am, 1997, junior year of college in St. Louis, and I go to a YouTube concert with my ex-girlfriend. She'd just broken up with me. <laughs> Brutal. Completely used me for the ticket, right? <laughs> And, you know, you know the song, One? Everybody know that song? Well, one, not the same, got to. OK, so that song comes on, and we end up slow dancing to that song. <laughs> that was the last time I ever held her. So, so imagine what, what happens whenever I hear that song come on. So talk about, talk about you know, winning through the hard strings and connecting on an emotional level. And, weaving a brand into every part of, of life. That's, that's what great brands do. So not only did you know, that, that band survive uh, and, and, and evolve in an amazing way, um, <clears throat> Bono leveraged that popularity to do some really amazing things. Um, 
love him or hate him. So here he, here he is in 2005 uh, on the cover of Time, one of the most uh, important people in the world f for um, launching this amazing campaign to um, end poverty, make poverty history. Um, here's kind of a snap current snapshot of that campaign now. It's called the One Campaign. They have about 3 million members. Um, they mobilized with several other NGOs, um, a, a massive global campaign that was both online and offline around a simple concept of make poverty history. And uh, that, that ended up being translated into you know, millions of letters that were sent to, to uh, decision makers, one of the biggest and, and earliest online successes for um, digital mobilization. So this is the first petition I ever signed online in 2005. Um, and I think I donated because I got this bracelet that I still have. And I found, when I was preparing this, I found this on my mountain bike. <laughs> so I've had this on my mountain bike since I moved back from DC about um, six years ago. And uh, what I still remember the cathartic experience of engaging with this global movement because it was about me. It was about me taking action to connect with other people, a group around the world, of people that cared about shit and were actually do, doing something about it. So um, what was really fun is that it came full circle when I started working with CARE2 in 2006. They had about 5 million members at that point, and they'd kind of figured out early on that um, nonprofits were going to be able to uh, really cut through the noise online through um, email, actually. Um, go figure. And uh, this is before Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Um, we were helping nonprofits grow their email lists uh, and you know, tens of thousands of people a month and really helping make a difference across a huge number of organizations, um, including the One Campaign. So now I get to work with the One Campaign, which is kind of cool, full circle. I haven't met Bono yet. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I was preparing for this, I swear. I was down the street at the little coffee shop here, and guess what song came on? Swear yeah. to God. <laughs> but it was the uh, Johnny Cash version. It was awesome. <laughs> it was like right after I looked at that slide. OK. Um, so this is kind of a key thing. So that, that's an example of, you know, Sure, none of us are Bono, none of us are U2, or, you know, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're marketers. Um, but we can steal from, uh, from Bono and what, what he's done to tap into our psychology. So, um, and he's not the first one to talk, to talk about it. Um, so besides Wi-Fi, which is now the new kind of basic human need for us, um, <laughs> um, the secret to Care2 success and, and, and really kind of what we're building Ola Momo's brand profile on, um, which is really kind of the first cause conscious um, nut company on the planet, is, is talking about creating meaning for people. So Maslow talks about you know, the three higher order needs. Um, I, I kind of realized this early on with Care2 that we were, um, besides providing guilt relief, we were creating meaning for people. So it was um, really cr providing a, a, a chance for people to connect with their tribe, people that are like them. Um, a chance to have voice, a chance to be creative and be kind of accepted um, and, and, and live and connect with people that have the same values. So that, that maps almost directly to Maslow. Um, so the best brands that I see now, like New Belgium, like Abe's Market, like Care2, they're doing a, 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 a knockdown job of really connecting and leading with people's values. Um, so that is, that's a really key thing to think about. Um, and the reason, uh, there's some great examples. I have a ton of stories of, of how this actually plays out in real life beyond the clicking and the taking action on a website that has a lot of petitions and healthy living content. Um, this guy is Quail Hodeck. Anybody know him? Up in Boulder. Um, really great guy. I met him at a conference a few years ago. He completely lit up and he goes, oh my god, I, I joined Care2 back in the late 90s. I had no idea there were other environmental activists out there. And um, that really inspired me. And I ended up starting this company called Renewable Energy Choices. And they now, <laughs> it's amazing, they power the carbon offsets for a ton of huge corporations like Whole Foods and Celestial Seasonings. Um, somewhere north of 100,000 cars is the equivalent of what they're uh, offsetting each year. Um, they're taking basically the equivalent of 100,000 cars off the road. So that came from connection with somebody getting uh, lit up by connecting with his tribe and realizing he wasn't alone and that there were other people with values really inspired him. So brands that inspire can, can really connect people in a deep way. 
um, that shows up in their everyday life. Um, this is really fun. I just heard yesterday we had a new Care2 member that came in. And a Care2 member, somebody's, you know, it's sort of like a social network, Facebook, Facebook member or something like that. So somebody came in and signed 1,300 petitions. It was a combination of 1,300 petition signatures and comments in one single day. And the head of our advocacy and campaigns department went through and read all of them, or as many as he could handle. And they were like all paragraphs. <laughs> it was insane. Um, you know, you never see anything like this. Um, but what happened was that we resonated so deeply with this woman. Um, and this happens every day. We have 25 million people across the world, most in the US. Um, tends to be women, average age 40, kind of your typical, you know, bolder archetype, my people. And um, they're doing great things. I mean, it's, it's sort of this, uh, this engine of goodness that's happening and inspiring people to go deeper. Um, another great story was when we were t dropping off my one-year-old um, at local daycare, a little in-home daycare, this woman. Uh, she was 29. She had, uh, had an advertising degree, um, but she was an entrepreneurial, trying to start her own business to make ends meet. And so she was taking care of all these little you know, five-year-olds for eight hours a day. And when she learned I worked from Care2, she you know, lit up. She's like, oh my god, every morning I go to Care2 and I take 10 minutes to you know, click on this and, and sign petitions and do click to donate campaigns, because that's my connection to the world. And you know, for somebody who's doing all this work for all of us as, as parents and trying to take care of our kids, that was kind of her connection to her tribe um, for that little bit of her day. So the way this translates into um, marketing is really cool. Um, we're now able to kind of transfer the brand that we've built and the connection we've built with our community and then um, really, sh really shortcut for brands through an endorsement and through recruitment to help them grow their tribes off of our tribe, essentially. Um, so it's really cool the way this is happening. And what's, what we're doing is we're leading with values. So in this case, for Abe's Market, um, we're asking people to, to pledge to be more mindful of their, of their food or their bodies, or in this case, it was... Um, pledge to go vegan. They're trying to promote a, a line of vegan products that they have. And what's happening in the process of people pledging in public, they're basically signing a petition or a pledge. Um, there's also a ton of sharing happening. And this is frankly how Care2 has grown. We spent zero dollars in marketing until this last year where we started to, do, to actually do a little bit of PR. Um, and you can see there from the numbers on this, about 10% of the people that signed this petition in this case, 5%, but it's 5 to 10% we'll share on Facebook as well. So we're really resonating with people on, on a values level first, and then talking, then basically educating them, um, taking them further down the path with a, a particular uh, cause or a brand or a particular idea. Um, so when we think about activating our tribes, um, some really cool things start to happen when you kind of get the initial formula right. So you start with um, you know, a lot of the things mentioned some of the previous speakers with, um, you know, the foundation of your brand and the values and the culture that you set. And if you nail that right, then really cool things start to happen like this, where I was looking for images for this presentation. And I found all kinds of cool stuff that I had no idea was happening. And there was this little ski team up in Steamboat that had found our nuts and they were psyched about them and they posed for pictures with the nuts. <laughs> um, so. We are, um, you know, early, early days with Olomomo, um, but uh, that's already starting to happen. Our formula is starting to work. So in um, a few, few key points here to kind of boil down what I've learned over the last eight years of doing this stuff. Um, one, um, make sure that you're really paying attention to email. It's, it's sort of the most overlooked channel, just sort of counterintuitive. And uh, it was reading, doing some research on this, and the reason that executives of major corporations don't pay attention to email is because of inertia. So they're spending tons of money on banner advertising and big media budgets. So that's what they pay attention to. And then they're, you know, they're kicking the email program to the intern. But guess what? When you look at the, the data, <laughs> it's the opposite. Um, email is kind of kicking butt of most other channels. So I'm not saying don't do the other channels, but if you're spending your time and your energy and your budget on growing social media, well, guess what? It's about um, a third or less as effective as, as email in terms of ROI. This is actually e-commerce data. So this is kind of where the, the rubber hits the road. Um, 
And the other thing that we've started to talk more about is leveraging your email to actually access social. It's the most efficient way you can do that. And I've done some really cool experiments with that where we took a, uh, a list of 10,000 email uh, addresses that we had recruited through Care2, mapped social media data to that, and then um, the nonprofit I was working with was trying to recruit offline precinct captains. So if any of you have ever been familiar with sort of political organizing, a lot of it's on the ground, kind of grassroots, face-to-face -face stuff. Really hard, about the hardest ask you can do. Um, harder than a donation, harder than a sale. And they had the highest response rate from people who had connected through a petition or a pledge. And then um, those people that were the most connected on social media converted the most to be the offline precinct ca captain. So they were able to identify behavior of people through the social media data and say, okay, they were able to drill down and say, okay, these people are already on Facebook. They have clout scores that are really high. So the chances, are, chances of that particular targeting um, are gonna yield a lot higher result than just a broad blast broadcast to your entire list where half of them might not even be on Facebook. So that, that goes to what Chuck was talking about, targeting and segmenting. That's a really cool way, a really cheap way you can do it. Um, but you kind of have to have a critical mass of an email list to do that, to have it make sense. And then uh, going direct on your data, um, anybody remember MySpace? When I started at Care2, it was the hot thing. And overnight, it was gone. And all those, pe all those brands that had invested you know, millions of dollars in, in creating a MySpace strategy, gone. Um, and interestingly, I've seen a, a, a lot of companies that have based their, or you know, gambled their entire, their entire um, life on a third party platform like this disappear overnight. Um, products that I've launched have disappeared overnight. So um, the latest is that sh Facebook has shifted their policies where you know, all that money that uh, New Belgium spent on recruiting 500,000 people, well, guess what? They can organically only reach 6% of them now because Facebook decided to change their, their uh, algorithms. So um, be, own your data. <laughs> That's the long-term strategy. Um, three, um, guess what? Um, going back to Chuck's party tips, don't talk about yourself. You're not the hero. Your brand is not the hero. You're the mentor. You're the guide. Um, this is from a book called Winning the Story Wars. This is the Bible for storytelling and brands, if you ask me. Um, these are the, some of the common archetypes that mentors take on. Think Yoda in Star Wars or Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, these are the people that kind of send their heroes on a journey. This is what we're um, building Ola Momo's brand around, actually, where we have um, this kind of monkey character who's the mentor guide, and we're inspiring our consumer customers to be, be, be good, be nutty, be adventurous. So we, we have that then show up in many interesting ways. So in, in, in a storytelling format, thinking as the guide, um, this is a list that I stumbled onto somehow, and they got me. Um, and because of this right here, the life you're meant to live. <laughs> so it resonates with me, kind of a has-been, you know, 30-something guy who used to be athletic and is like craving for adventure. And they got me. So they do these great little stories where it's, you know, creating this imagery and these images of a of a life of you know adventure and uh, travel and luxury it's great um, so storytelling um, think about you know who your personas are and know thy tribe um, prana does an amazing job of this they've completely dialed into who their their core customer is again it's probably the boulder um, archetype <laughs> um, and uh, this is what we've done at care Two as well in terms of actually developing personas a few years ago we figured out that we were attracting more women than men um, women tend to be nicer, I guess. And um, they, uh, so it's average, average age 40, so 25 to basically 60 year olds that um, have pets. Um, there's a few cat ladies in here. Um, they like to sign petitions. They like to write letters to the editor. They vote, they donate. Um, they're, they're the good people. Um, and uh, I was trying to read this in backwards on the window back there. Um, <laughs> And uh, this, is, this is a really important tip that, that we're really trying to exercise. And, and Prana, again, does an awesome job of this. They really focus in on their core customer. So if you look at their website, they actually have their personas are actually real um, elite athletes. And these elite athletes are who we all want to be. Um, so they kind of reflect back on us. This is sort of the example of what we're aspiring to. 
Um, they do a really good job of, of, you know, creating kind of a hero feedback loop with these people. So you can go in and drill down on all these profiles and find some amazing um, content and tips and philosophies and inspiring um, life stories. Really cool. Lots of video. Um, so they really focus in, they really go deep and that kind of deep connection, you know, led to a very massive exit recently. <laughs> um, and uh, so this is, this is kind of the same thing we've done with Olomomo, but we focus really geographically. So this is another way to think about it. So we started out in Boulder, three or four years at farmer's markets, really getting to know kind of our core customer, which is that you know, natural products consumer, that Boulder consumer, um, really honed in on what, the, what products were working, what was selling best, packaging. We had a, you know, an amazing live test environment. And then um, the result of that focus led to um, raising a bunch of money last year, hiring a CEO, Mark back there, um, building a team around him. And uh, a year ago, we had zero distribution essentially nationally. And now this is where, uh, where we were about uh, a month ago. Um, 150 grocery stores and about, uh, about 400 coffee shops. So um, focus, go deep to go big. And, and, and just a note of that, we're, we're, um, we're really focusing now where these clusters have developed, like in the Northeast, and we're trying to dominate and really, you know, saturate those areas with the brand before we spread ourselves too thin um, across the entire country. So go deep to go big. And then uh, the other thing we're doing at Olamomo, and this is also um, a great practice for any size company, is develop a culture of content curation across the entire team. Um, this is something I did at Care2 back in 2006 when I launched um, one of the first nonprofit marketing blogs called frogloop.com. It's kind of a focus on... Um, it's a B2B blog that's focused on best practices for marketing for causes and nonprofits and cause-oriented brands. And uh, the idea is that you, you get buy-in from the entire team and you distribute the work. And this makes things a lot more efficient. There's no bottleneck with one person having to come up with all the content. It reflects the whole culture of the whole team a lot better. It's really cool. So we launched this at uh, Care2, or at, um, sorry, Olomomo. Um, too many hats that I wear, I get them all mixed up. <laughs> and um, so what we do is we have, everybody's responsible for a bit of content um, each week. And, and we collect it on Evernote, which is a great sort of content sharing tool. And then um, we have a, a curator who's sitting here in the room right now, um, who will go through and actually then choose the best place for that. So we, you know, daily posts on Twitter and Facebook, and then um, more meaty posts that go on a blog, or um, sometimes we'll do recipes on Pinterest. Um, so we kind of choose the content for the right channel, and all of it's designed to be shareable. Um, and we're focusing on really our core, our core brand themes, which is, you know, be nutty, be good, be adventurous. We're trying to inspire people through the brand and through the stories and highlighting not ourselves, but all the other cool stuff that we come across and all the educational content. And at Care2, we do this with daily action alerts um, that drive people to take action. And this is how a lot of our, our business operates, where we're, we're driving people to take action on causes that are sponsored by other, other brands or nonprofits. Um, and then also through healthy living content and a variety of other newsletters where it's a lot of shareable, um, bite-sized, helpful information. I like this one. It was um, how to tell if your wine habit's healthy. <laughs> um, turned out I'm doing pretty well. Um, so, um, and then, uh, you know, with Abe's Market, another great example, they have a mix of kind of, they're, they're e-commerce, so they have a mix of uh, bite-sized, chewable content that's really helpful and informational and educational, um, but it's also kind of tied into their their e-commerce sales. So um, they're they're killing it. And then uh, Gaiam, similarly, they have um, they they've done some list growth recruitment with us, and then they're they're translating that into e-commerce sales through um, through content marketing. Um, and this is probably the most important point. <laughs> Can anybody name that band, by the way? I've been trying this for years. Nobody's nailed it. I don't actually know. <laughs> so that's it. Ask for help. There's a lot of great smart people in here. Thanks for all the presentations. And um, I was actually a CU Denver uh, grad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>